Yo dudes, what's going on? Carter here. Let's do another video, shall we? This one's going to be about the uh, ZT0560, right? Big buzz knife, a lot of uh, interest in this particular blade. I was able to pick one up recently from uh, Monkey Edge. They're now finally starting to appear here and there for production prices. Real quick, let's go over the specs. Don't want to spend too much time on it, but you know it is important to uh, to the video. Uh, so we've got about a four inch blade, nine inches overall, L Max steel. I'm not going to go into a bunch of detail about that because I don't know much about the steel. I'm not a huge steel guy. I'm just kind of the guy that you know if it's a cool steel, a cool new steel with a neat name for some reason I want it. But I don't really spend a lot of time looking into its properties too much but uh, it is a powdered steel and uh, a lot of people like it some people don't like I said I haven't really looked too much into it but uh, there we go LMAX steel this is number 2065 hard to believe that there's 2000 of these babies out there but there are so this is the second or third collaboration with ZT um, Hinderer did the 0551 and the 0550 a few years ago, and then this 0560 and 0561, and then there's the uh, the Cryo, which isn't out yet. It's a really small, small blade, inexpensive, I think around 30 bucks. I don't know which one came first, this one or that one. I remember seeing pictures of the uh, the Cryo some time ago, but no idea when it's coming out. That's probably the, the third collab. He's also done stuff with Gerber, believe it or not. He has a... Uh, rescue knife that he did with Gerber, which is pretty interesting. Uh, flipper design obviously has a bearing system. If you saw my takedown video you would have seen the bearing system in there. Titanium frame lock, very nicely sculpted. Basically has the same pattern on the titanium side as it does the G10 side. It's nice and uh, contoured so it's radius this way as well as the 3D machining. Let's see if we can get a close up here. You can see the awesome ZT logo on the pocket clip. Very deep carry. This is not my preferred pocket clip. Um, I don't like the looks of it and I don't really need to carry that deep but I know a lot of people do like it. You can see the cutout right there so you can access the uh, torque screws. Very big lanyard hole. You can go all the way through or do the uh, just the titanium side or I guess the other side too if that's what you want. Tip up, tip down, left hand, right hand carry. A lot of options on this sucker. There's the hinder lock stop. You can see the uh, cool texture. Nice and bead blasted. Decently thick titanium. There's the flipper with the infamous jimping on the pointless end. Um, I still haven't heard conclusively if there's a reason for that. I know somebody recently mentioned, who was it? Uh, oh, I think it was Alan Alishowitz. He's doing a production tank for one of his tank models. He's doing a production version for uh, Hogue. And uh, somebody asked him, he had the same thing on his flipper design, and he just said he did it because it looked cool. So I don't think it serves any functional purpose. Uh, his XM series also has the same thing. I think it's just there for looks. Very nice blade, tons of cutting edge. One of the great things about flippers, I'm really starting to warm up to the whole flipper design, although it's still just not my favorite, is you get the uh, protection of like a safety choil, but you get a full cutting edge, and that is huge. Very big blade. This, don't, you know, don't be uh, mistaken, this is a very large knife. And it's one of those knives that I've got lots of four inch bladed knives. I've got knives that are over nine inches, but for some reason this one just seems bigger. And I think it's because it's actually very, you know, fairly thin. It's not very thick. So it does kind of throw you off a little. You've got that really nice thick blade stock right there. Uses these stop pins, the thumb stud stop pins that hit both the TI side and the stainless steel liner on this side. It does have a carbonized lock bar like I mentioned before. 
Uh, some of you that watch my channel, you know that I uh, put up a video and then took it down asking what your opinion was on this lockup percentage, if it's something you would be concerned about or not. Um, pretty much the response I got was the same thing I was thinking in my head, kind of both ways, you know, I can see both ways. Um, so anyways, I took that video down, served its purpose, no reason for it to hang out any longer. Very cool blade. Um, fun to flip. It does start to hurt your finger though, because <laughs> you hit this jimping when you flip it too much, which of course is just, you know, because I, you know, any practical usage you wouldn't have that issue, but just because I sit and watch a movie and flip it over and over again, just a little thing to mention. Very, very functional jimping. It feels good in the hand, um, is in the shape, however, because it is so thin, it just, it doesn't quite feel right for me. I would like it to be a little beefier. I actually prefer the feeling of the 0550 to this one. This just, it doesn't feel out my hand enough. It's just a little too, a little too thin. However, that does make it ride in the pocket very, very nicely. It just fills up, you know, pretty much from top of your pocket all the way to the bottom, which is used up space anyways. But it gives you plenty of room to get in and out of there and to put other stuff in there, so very nice in the pocket very big standoffs right there pillar style standoffs very nice so yeah um you know like i said my overall impression is it's a very nice knife it's done very well um i do actually prefer the 0550 to this one that's just me though you know there's no I can't sit here and say because this feature's better, that feature's better, whatever. It just, I just like that one better. I like the styling of it. I like the way it feels. I like the thicker lock bar and the earlier lock up on it. But that's just me. Very nice knife if you can find one. They're starting to pop up more and more all the time. And uh, it'll be really cool once Hinderer, I'm assuming he'll come out with scales for it. So that'll be really nice. I'd like to get a, a blue scale. Very cool stuff, guys. Alright, so I guess that's all I really wanted to say. Tons of reviews out on this guy. All over the place. Later. Okay, guys, there are a couple things that I forgot to mention on the first part of this video. You know, which is what happens when you don't kind of write things down or... Kind of think of your game plan and, and things like that. Um, it kind of dawned on me, one of the reasons why this feels so big is just because of how much hangs out of your palm right here. Just due to the placement of the hand. Um, you know, if it was further back, it's just something about that really just makes it seem bigger. And, you know, I know I talked about that a lot, but it just fascinates me how... You know, it's not that huge of a knife. I've got knives this size, but for some reason, this one just feels like it's super long. It's crazy. Uh, but anyways, another thing I wanted to address is the uh, the lockup percentage on there. Um, it does bother me just because it's kind of one of those little knife mental block things. I don't have any logical reason to think that this is going to cause any problems or that it needs to be different. But you know, it's just one of those little quirky things that you pick up where you just want a new knife to lock up, like, you know, there. And I don't know, I guess I just gotta get past that. Cause yeah, it works just fine, it locks up well. It's carbonized, I'm sure it's got lots of life in it. I don't think Kershaw warranties their lockup for life. Correct me if I'm wrong, that's why I you know, wanted to ask you guys your opinion on sending it in because my understanding is, you know, I'd only get one shot basically by saying I just got this and it's locking up farther than I would like. You know, I don't think I can come back in four months if it gets lock rock and say, you know, fix it. I think they'll say, well, you wore it out, buy a new one. But uh, I could be wrong on that. So let me know those that have dealt with their warranty. I don't, you know, because like a Strider is for life. So doesn't matter if you use the crap out of it, play with it every day. Ten years later, if it needs work, send it in, they'll fix it. 
good to go. But I'm pretty sure this is more like a limited kind of temporary warranty, um, you know, where they won't cover like normal wear unless it's after it's brand new. Uh, but the other thing I wanted to talk about is the detent on here. Um, when I picked this up, I had heard a lot about super strong detents, you know, overly strong detents. And when I got it out of the box, it, it was a little strong, but uh, now it's, you know, it's not that strong at all. I mean, I can flick it open. I can do the uh, Spyderco opening. It's really not, not that strong. But it does have that, uh, that proper flipper detent where the top of the ball has been flattened out so that once it hits that point it just rockets out. So I'm glad that they did that that way. Okay guys, 